Gentel with the Morris Microstead. And uh, it's the end of the evening. It's the fourth night of Hanukkah. And you guys, we have a rooster. <laughs> so let's see. It's the evening and the kids are in bed all tucked away. And I thought I'd sit down and share a funny little story. Uh, it was like, I don't know, a couple nights ago, or I guess a couple mornings. It was, uh, I don't know, like five in the morning, I think. And my daughter, my youngest, Ava, she's just a couple months old. She was up nursing and she was just having a hard time getting back to sleep. So I ended up staying up. And uh, let's see, all of a sudden I heard this really whiny noise. I was like, it was like five, five thirty in the morning. And um, I was like, what is that? I thought my daughter was waking up. My other daughter was waking up and coming into bed. I heard it again, like clear as day. Arr, 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 arr. And I was like, oh, we have a rooster. And I heard it. it was going off over and over again. I wasn't wearing any pants. <laughs> so I was like in a hurry. I like jumped up out of bed, woke up my infant, and I threw my pants on. <laughs> And I was like, it's gonna stop crowing. So I didn't even put shoes on, it was 18 degrees. And I ran outside with my flashlight on my phone and I'm like looking to see if it's gonna crow again. And sure enough it does. And it's my big chocolate Easter egger. So gorgeous bird. I was really excited when I um, when we got that one from Tractor Supply. But, um, and it crowed and it is a mean rooster. I had to wrestle that thing to the ground and I lost my flashlight. It, like my phone fell to the ground. And it's like screaming, it's like arr, arr. And uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, we live in a suburban neighborhood. We have, I think we border one, two, three, four, like five or six houses. We're actually in this really weird spot where the, the street on the other side kind of like curves. And so many like points of like the yards meet our house. And so um, yeah, our, our yard, our backyard borders like six other houses neighbor on each side and then like four or three or four on the back so so yeah it's like 5 30 in the morning and this thing is screaming and um, I finally get both of its wings and I'm able to like tuck it up under my arm and find my flashlight on the ground and I come and I put it in a box in the garage and I text my husband we definitely have a rooster and I think we have another one I'm almost positive I haven't heard it crow but by the way it was acting when we released the rooster back out to the yard it's definitely another rooster so and I had sus suspected for some time that we had two, two roosters um, from our batch of chicks that we got this year so for those of you who don't know our story we used to live on a 10 acre homestead in northern Washington and we had sheep and a llama and about 30 poultry um, and we downsized and came to southern Idaho um, to be near family. And we live in just a suburban neighborhood on a little over 8,000 square feet. Um, and so we are doing a suburban homestead, which we are calling the, our micro homestead. And over the last two years, we have um, implemented chickens and quail and a fairly like nicely producing garden, which we plan to extend little by little each year. The yard is was completely raw, just all weeds, bindweed and mallow. Um, like wild lettuce, just tons and tons of um, weeds out there. And so little by little we're developing, adding in um, garden beds and just kind of conceptualizing what we really want that to look like. So there's two sets of rules you have to consider when you have chickens within the city. There's the city's rules on chickens and then if you have an HOA or you live in a subdivision, then it's like the HOA's rules or the CCNR's. So um, our city that we live in has no rules on livestock, which is really uh, weird because it's like a metropolitan area. Um, it's very like, it's not like a rural city. Um, so, but still there's no rules on the amount of chickens that you can have. Um, we do live in a subdivision, but there is no H OA. There are some CCNRs that have limitations on chickens, but they belong to an HOA that no longer exists. So it's kind of a great area for us. 
So still, um, the surrounding cities have um, limits that are roughly around like 10 chickens. And within city limits, you generally don't want to have a rooster just out of respect to your neighbors. Again, there are no um, city limit. Um, there's no city rules or HOA rules that say we can't have a rooster, but we're just good neighbors and we don't want to have a rooster <laughs> crowing before daylight <laughs> to the surrounding like six neighbors um, who can hear them. One of which has like, there's like a balcony and I'm pretty sure that's their bedroom and the chicken run is like a good, like, I don't know, like it's close. So all that to say we don't want to have a rooster in our suburban little micro stead in the city. So um, two roosters no less. <laughs> so I think there are two mentalities um, or at least two different kinds of people when it comes to own chicken ownership and chicken husbandry um, and that is like the pets versus farm mentality um, and so while we don't have super pampered chickens uh, we do have well-loved chickens. They are well-loved by a little girl who goes out on pets and snuggles them. Um, we feed them um, organic chicken or kitchen scraps. Uh, we take really good care of them, um, but we tend to cull versus like rehome. And the sentiment is more self-sustainability versus like um, like pet that pet sentiment. And so um, that is one of the reasons we are going to butcher our rooster instead of rehome him. Rehoming roosters is hard and he's a mean rooster. Um, and so we don't rehome mean roosters. That's a call for us. And so we are going to end up butchering him. I know some folks are going to be mad at me for that. Um, but it's important to us that we know how to butcher and that we are self-sustainable in that way of um, just like practicing that skill set. And, um, and also just providing food from, for our home. We always said whenever we had meat animals that those animals lived an amazing life and only had one bad day. And that's true of this rooster also. He had a really great life here and we're gonna be so thankful for the sustenance he's gonna provide our family. So, and we really try not to waste. We use, when we cook the chicken, we make sure um, to um, like use the bones for bone broth and try to use up as much of the animal as we can. So let's see. Yes, I think that's it for this evening. Hopefully I can circle back around and share when we find out if that other um, suspected rooster is a rooster. And that is all for now. So thank you guys so much for joining me this evening for my funny rooster story. And uh, let's see, if you guys like these videos, I would love if you would like them in the comment section and uh, subscribe to the channel if you love it. It's a free way to support my channel and um, just get me going. So thank you so much for that. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Durr.